surgery coding errors to watch for? So the, the questioner asks, I have a job opportunity to code for surgery, but I'm nervous about it because my experience in coding has been limited to PEDS. Is there any advice or resources you can point me to so that I can, as Alicia says, increase my knowledge base? So I did have an opportunity to look over the, the answer sheet just before. So um, what she did is she found a great article, and I um, I don't know if that's her first name, Jitendra, and it sounds like someone who might be in the club. That name sounds very familiar. At any rate, um, on the answer sheet is the um, the link to the website where Alicia got a lot of this information. Maybe uh, Boyd could share that in the the two different uh, there are three different audiences, four different, right? We have LinkedIn going too <laughs> um, to share that with them. But here was her summary of of those notes. One of the um, trouble areas is knowing when to code open versus arthroscopic procedures. And I know in teaching um, coding over the years, this is a big thing that I stress with the students. Look for things like the word scope or portal. Sometimes you'll see that word portal. I used to think when I was in you know, learning coding for the first time that if it was arthroscopic, there was no cutting into the body. And that's not true. They obviously have to make little slits to get the, the instrumentation in. And normally it's more than one because you got one for the scope, one for the instrumentation, maybe two for the instruments. So um, that's what you want to, those are the clues that you want to look for in the reports. Um, focus on the procedure heading as well um, to see what was that, and then go into the body of the report to see what was actually done. The next thing was coding for, oops, you got to go back a little bit, Boyd. There you go. Coding for lesion, destruction, um, per nerve, not the level. When we start talking about the spine, you always need to understand, are we talking about the individual bones or the levels? So if you're doing a radiofrequency ablation of lesions and they say it's at the L2, L3, and L4, well, then you have three levels. But sometimes coders get confused because they're used to um, coding for facet joint injections. Well, if it's a joint, it's going to be in between those levels. And, and using the L2, L3, L4 example, then you would only have two joints in between those three um, levels. So that's another tricky area. OK, now the next page. So coding the number of lesions incorrectly. This one was, was very interesting when, when I was reading it. This has always stumped people over the years. And then I wanted to go refresh myself because it's been a while since I talked about it, make sure there wasn't any coding changes that um, I wasn't aware of. But it's still the same. Um, and I was asking Boyd, I don't know, Boyd, were you able to pull up Find a Code? Yes. I just wanted to use this also as an opportunity to show um, you know, how we are um, I'm trying to think of the correct word to use, not, not partners, but um, we like each other, find a code in CCO. Um, we promote them with our club, and they've also built in, if you could type in that box, um, 1700. You can, in, you, can, you can click in there. I've just given you control, I think. I oh, hope. okay. Let's see if that works. Oops. So what I'm doing is I'm looking up that CPT code that Alicia referenced in the document, this uh, 17000 destruction um, code. And if you'll notice, you'll see where this one says first lesion. Thank you. Um, first lesion. And then I'm going to click this right arrow here to go to the next code in the range to 17003. And if you'll notice this one, it says second through 14 lesions and then that keyword each. So if you had 12 lesions, you report one of the first code and 11 of this code. But here's the reason why I wanted to come here to find a code. If we scroll down a little bit, it, does it scroll for me? It's not working. There we go. Um, in find a code, they've got this thing. I can get it to, doesn't like me, boy. Can you scroll down a little bit? <laughs> Okay, and where it says coding tips, if you click that plus sign, that'll expand that section. Did I goof? It went black for me. Is it? Can you see it? <laughs> He's like, why'd she have me do this? Okay, go ahead. All right, then um, click on the plus sign next to coding tips where it says seven tips. 
one. Yeah. And you'll see right there, it says CCO training video. And if you click that plus sign, what the good folks at Findico did is they went and they, they um, scoured our YouTube channel. And if they found um, matches, they linked it here. And we have um, happened to have a video. I don't know what go down. There. there, and you don't have to click on it, but you see where it says for more information on how to code lesion removal, check out this training video from codingcertification.org. And when you click on it, it takes you to our YouTube channel to a little video clip of a previous Q and A webinar where we talked about it. So I just thought that was kind of cool, and I thought I would um, take take an opportunity to, um, you know, show that very old picture of me. Do not. <laughs> 2012, yeah. Yeah, but it still, it still applies. It's still current information. So what I just explained is on this video. Um, so at any rate, we can go back to the um, Google Doc. So that's, that's a tricky point with those lesions. Sometimes um, people feel you can only code um, one of that 17003 and when when their word in there says each and then of course there's uh, the 17004 and that's when you have 15 or more so you drop the first two codes and you just stick with that one once you have 15 or more and that's only one unit um, the next tricky area is reporting both arthroscopic and open techniques for one procedure what you need to understand here is that sometimes the intention might be to handle a problem just with a scope. They don't plan on doing open, but they have to convert it to an open procedure. And if that's the case, then you only want to code the open procedure. That's the gist of that one. Wrong procedure code for debridement of ACL. So when there's um, no more specific procedure codes and medical coders need to report or use unlisted codes. We don't like hearing that. I remember I um, had a job where I worked as a uh, researcher, a coding help desk, and they would have questions like this. And 80% of the time, the answer was, you have to use an unlisted code. They're like, no, no. <laughs> but um, that's what unlisted codes are for. If you do not have a procedure that matches what you're doing, then you use the nearest unlisted code to um, what you're trying to describe. And of course, when you send in the documentation, if it's a lot like another code in work effort um, and, and similar technique, then, then state that in your letter to help um, get the right reimbursement. And an example here was for debridement of cartilage. Oops. Now I know what they feel like when I'm driving. <laughs> we have to right. report CPT code 29877, but for arthroscopic debridement of an ACL ligament, it has no specific CPT code. So therefore, the nearest unlisted code is the 29999. And oftentimes, just a little hint, those unlisted codes are the ones that, that end in nine, and they're at the end of sections. So make sure you look at all of the unlisted codes to get to the closest unlisted one that you can. Um, she goes on to say, in the same way medical coders use CPT 29828 to code arthroscopic biceps tenotomy rather than using the unlisted code. So you can see the, um, the choices here, 29877 is arthroscopic um, uh, for the knee and 29828 is for the shoulder, but then the 29999 is the unlisted. So if your two descriptions do not fit what you did, it's close, but it doesn't fit, you need to use the unlisted code. I didn't say I quit. <laughs> All right. And then um, the next one is failing to code for different polyp removal techniques. So Three that she listed here as examples, you can remove a polyp with cold biopsy, hot biopsy, snare biopsy, and there's there's a couple other techniques. If you were if you remove three biopsies with the cold technique, you only get to report that code once. But if you report two with the cold technique and one with the hot technique, you can actually report one code for each of the techniques. So a lot of people don't realize that and they're losing out on um, reimbursement. If you have to switch up techniques, you get to code um, both codes. And of course, um, the multiple surgical 
uh, modifier or reduction would, would apply there. And it goes on to say, when all these techniques are used together on different polyps, we have to report each technique separately. The number of polyps does not matter. Because in the, in the description, when you read the code, it says polyp or polyps, you know, that S in parentheses. But if you have multiple techniques, then you can report them separate. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.